Hello, my awesome scientist. So tonight we are going to talk about condensation, evaporation, melting, and freezing. Today in class you learned about some really important temperatures that go with the properties of water and we learned about the boiling point, the melting point, and the freezing point. And tonight what we want to do is kind of take that a little bit further and make sure we understand exactly what process is happening at zero degrees Celsius and exactly what hap happens at 100 degrees Celsius. Remember, we talked about how temperature is the boss of a matter, and depending on if my temperature is increasing or decreasing, that's going to determine what state of matter that water is, Okay, whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So let's start with some processes that are you are really familiar with. Okay, So right here, I have a glass of what? Okay, so I have a glass of water, and that's what state of matter? A liquid. Very good. And it's just sitting out in my classroom. so. It's right now, it's just a liquid. I just got it right out the faucet, okay? But what if I take this liquid and I put it on this tool that we learned about earlier this year? Remember what this tool's called? A hot plate. So what happens if I put this beaker of water on this hot plate and I turn this hot plate on? What's going to happen to those molecules in that water? Yeah, they're going to start going a lot faster. And remember, when the molecules speed up, it can't stay a liquid anymore. So when those molecules speed up, it's going to turn from a liquid into a gas. And when liquids turn into gases, that is called evaporation. It's going from liquid water to what we call water vapor. So when water is in the gas state, we call it water vapor. You may also hear it called steam. Okay, you've seen that all the time, uh, like when your parents cook on the stove, you, they might boil some water and you see that water go from liquid into gas. It doesn't disappear, it just turns into water vapor, which is all around us. So that's the first process we need to know is evaporation. The second process we need to know is melting. Okay, so here I have some ice. I just got this out of the freezer and now that it's sitting in my hand, um, think about what's happening to it. Your hands, if you rub your hands together, do you feel that? You're giving off heat. And so when that ice comes out of the freezer, the, the temperature is going up because now it's not in that cold freezer anymore. Heat is being added to it from around the room and from your hands. And that ice cannot stay that solid anymore. Remember those solid, the molecules stay pretty close together and they don't move. But now that the temperature is starting to warm up, we're adding heat to the ice those molecules are going to move a little bit faster and that solid ice is going to start turning into what? Very good. It's going to turn back into liquid water. So when ice is a solid, goes back to liquid water after we've added heat, that is called melting. Okay, so we've talked about evaporation. We have talked about melting. Next process is, let's say I have this same water but now I put it in the freezer. Okay, now am I adding heat to it or taking heat away from this water? Right, I'm gonna take heat away from this water. When I put this water, this liquid water into the freezer, the molecules are gonna start to slow down and it's gonna start turning back into what? Ice, because I have now put it in a really cold freezer and it's going to go from a liquid back to a solid. So when I go from a liquid, put it in my freezer, go to a solid, that's called freezing. That's how you get your popsicles nice and cold. You put this liquid popsicle in the freezer and after a few hours it turns into a ice cold popsicle. That's really great treat on a hot summer day, especially in Texas, isn't it? Okay, but at the same time, if I take this popsicle out, like I can kind of tell now, it's been out of the freezer for about five minutes it's starting to do what now? Melt. So I can constantly go from one state of matter back to another state of matter depending on whether I'm adding that heat or taking that heat away. So now I want to talk about one that a lot of students forget about or it's, it's kind of tricky to understand. Um, it's called condensation. So say that word with me. Condensation. And you have seen condensation all the time. It's happening all around you. So if I have this ice cold glass of water, and I can even add some more ice to it here, I'm making the water a lot colder. 
And what you need to remember is that all around this cup on the outside is water vapor. And remember, water vapor is a gas and the molecules are moving really quickly. Think about if you've ever had an ice cold glass of water sit out or even an ice cold glass of soda, like if you go to a restaurant and you order a Coke or some type of anything really, and you've got that glass right there, eventually what do you notice on the outside of your cup? Like right here, all of a sudden, I can wipe off all of this wet stuff. So all of a sudden there's water on the outside of my cup. But where did that water come from? A lot of people think that it came from inside the cup. But think about it. Can water travel through this plastic cup? No. So that means the water did not come from inside the cup. It came from somewhere else. And the water on the outside of your cup or like on the outside of a soda can, if you've ever let a soda can, an ice cold soda can sit out for a little bit, you start to feel droplets of water on the outside, it's coming from the air around you. When you took that ice cold liquid out, the cold, cold liquid from inside started cooling down the air around your glass or around your soda can. And remember, when that gas starts to cool down, it can't stay a gas any longer because when that coldness hits that gas, it's gonna cause the molecules to start slowing down. And when those molecules start slowing down, it can't stay as a gas. It's got no choice but to turn back into a liquid. So when you have gases that cool down, and turn back into a liquid, that is called condensation. You see it on the outside of your glasses, you see it on the outside of your soda cans, you also see it when you take a shower and all of a sudden the mirror has liquid all over it, that's condensation. And we're gonna talk more about that tomorrow and you guys are gonna experiment and investigate that just a little bit more. Okay, so now we should know those four processes that help matter change states. So we talked about freezing, melting, evaporating, and condensation. And now we're just gonna take a few notes so that we make sure we have our reference in our journal to always help us study. Okay, you should be on page 26 in your journal. Our title is Changing States. Today is September 25th. We are gonna take some very quick notes um, to kind of just jot down what I just taught you. So. After you go ahead and pause it and get it glued in, and then after you have it all glued in, then um, go ahead and take your notes. If for some reason you lost your sheet, remember we are problem solvers, and you can either print one off from the database or you can handwrite it yourself. So remember we are problem solvers. Okay, so we just talked about how we can change from one state to an another, and by state I mean solid, liquid, or gas. And we know that water can be all three states of matter. And water can change from one physical state to another by either adding or removing heat. Okay, so remember temperature is the boss of water. It is the boss of matter. And if I increase my temperature, something's gonna happen. If I decrease my temperature, something else is gonna happen. So here we're gonna first talk about how adding heat can cause water to change. And there are two ways that adding heat can cause water to change. It just depends on how much heat I, I add. So I can evaporate my water. So evaporation is when I add heat and that causes matter to change from a liquid to a gas. Okay, so that is the first thing that can happen when I add heat. And in order for evaporation to happen, I have to add a lot, a lot, a lot of heat. It means it has to reach what? 100 degrees Celsius. Very good. As soon as it starts boiling, that's when the water will start evaporating. So I added a lot of heat. Okay, but down here, if I start with a solid, okay, I don't have to add as much heat. My solid just has to reach zero degrees Celsius. And when it reaches zero degrees Celsius, this ice will start melting and turn into a liquid. So melting is when I add heat and my matter changes from a solid to a liquid. So that's what happens when I add heat, evaporation and melting. Now on the other hand, if I start removing heat from my matter, from my water, then my temperature is going to be decreasing. And when I remove heat, 
Um, remember the molecules slow down and it's going to turn into either a liquid or a solid depending on how much um, heat is removed. So here, remember when I go from a gas to a liquid, kind of like what you see on the outside of your soda can, that is called condensation. And then the other thing that can happen when I remove heat is when I take my liquid, I put it in the freezer, and it's going to turn back into a solid. That is called freezing. And remember, in order for it to freeze, it has to reach zero degrees Celsius. So these are our four processes. Make sure you know the definition of each of these processes and also whether heat is being added or removed. So I know tonight's video was just a little bit longer, but I hope that it was helpful. And tomorrow, come prepared to discuss and explore evaporation, condensation, melting, and freezing. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.